blue list. The blue list, these are also enemies of the new world order, but are followers of the red list folks. So if you're following people that know better, you're automatically on the blue list. Reverend Al Sharpton, he's on the red list. They're gonna, anyone that have powerful influence that can guide the people in time of chaos will be dead already. And yeah, yeah I know they are thinking, our government, can our government do this? Don't you know the things this government have done, man? You over here, right? Who did this? Our government. Yes. How can you be surprised that your government can do something as violent, kill people? They relocated a whole nation, man. Look at what happened with the North American Indians. Look what happened to even poor white people in this country. Let me tell you, man, you're going to find out the government is separate from the people. It's not for the people, it's the rule of the people. Source Michael Amaholi, 20 years Naval Intelligence CIA under Bush Sr. For example, the FEMA death camp of the Mojave is a full gas and cremating death camp, dedicated to the termination of all on FEMA's red blue list under martial law. I have previously documented this horrific death camp, and documented the eyewitness accounts of several former NWO supporters who were flown out there. My friends, Doc Marquis, Illuminati, and Elaine Nost, CIA, were both flown separately to this facility in the Mojave Desert of California. It boasts a landing strip. According to another contact, a D agent who personally investigated this FEMA facility, it was recently doubled in size to increase killing capacity. It is fully staffed. All staff members wear black SWAT team uniforms. When I asked Doc Marquis what his sentiments were, back when he was a member of the Illuminati and given a tour of his killing facility, his reply was, sheer joy. I rejoiced at the thought of Christians being terminated in this place. A chilling response, but typical of this nation's Satanists and NWO supporters. The FEMA death camp was shown off as something the NWO and FEMA was literally proud of. And there are many more FEMA detention camps whose ultimate purpose under martial law is not to save life, but to terminate human lives deemed unworthy of entering into the dawning of Lucifer's new world order. Know the cold hard facts about FEMA. And then think twice before going meekly to such camps under a state of martial law in your region. We are all on a red or blue list somewhere, those on the red list will be walk on at 4 a.m. and taken to the camps and probably killed. Red list, these people are the enemies of the NWO. They are the leaders of patriot groups, outspoken ministers, outspoken talk show hosts, community leaders, and even probably net leaders. These people will be dragged out of their homes at 4 a.m. and will be taken to FEMA detention centers and killed. This will take place approximately two weeks before martial law is enforced. Blue list, these are also enemies of the NWO, but are followers of the red list folks. These people will be rounded up after martial law is in place, and will be taken to the detention centers and re-educated. Various mind control techniques will be used on them. Most will not survive this. Mr. Springmeyer was not specific on exactly who was on the blue list, but I would guess that people such as you and I are on that list. Yellow list, these are citizens who know nothing about the NWO, which is the New World Order. And don't want to know. They are considered to be no threat at all and will be instructed as to how to behave and will most likely do whatever they are told. Unfortunately there are too many of these to be effectively controlled, so many will be killed or starved. By the way, once you're in the FEMA camp they will start chipping the people with the satanic RFID chip 666. All this and much more is prophesied in the book of Revelation. I have very important information that is crucial for you Americans to know. On March 17, 8, the House of Representatives held a special closed session. This was only the fourth time in 176 years that Congress has closed its doors to the public.
Once again, looking live at the U.S. Capitol at this hour here in Washington, a security sweep on the floor of the U.S. House. We're told maybe 9.30, maybe 10 o'clock Eastern time is uh, the starting point for that secret uh, secret session. We don't expect to see uh, the House of Representatives back uh, in public tonight. They'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 and continue their public debate on the uh, FISA uh, legislation. Earlier this evening, about 6 o'clock Eastern time, there was some debate on the floor talking about this secret session, this closed session. Here's some of what led up to where we are now. Madam Speaker, uh, at the request of and after discussion with the uh, distinguished uh, Republican whip, I ask unanimous consent that at a time designated by the Speaker on the legislative day of March 13, 2008, the House resolve itself into secret session as though pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 17. Secondly, debate in such secret session proceed without intervening motion for one hour, equally divided and controlled by the majority leader and the minority whip. And thirdly, at the conclusion of that debate, the secret session shall be dissolved. Is the right to object, Madam Speaker? Gentleman is recognized. I, I'd like to, the, the leader, I believe I heard you say Clause 8. Did you mean Clause 9? Clause 9. Excuse clause me. 9. And this, uh, this, uh, se this secret session uh, would convene, be convened at some time by the Speaker today when the uh, room has been secured and would dissolve at the end of uh, an hour of discussion. Is that the way I understand the... Uh, that is, that, that's what the uh, consent agreement kind consent of Consent agreement. Is. Pursuant to our discussions. I continue his point of reservation. I think I can withdraw my reservation. Gentleman withdraws his point. Reserving the right to object. We get notice on. Gentleman from Ohio. Would the uh, gentleman from Maryland yield to question? Certainly. Uh, no. Uh, but you may want to stay. Can you divulge to this House what is going to be discussed? Not the content of it, but the topic that's going to be discussed. My presumption uh, is, and, and uh, I think that's accurate because of my discussions with the Republican uh, uh, whip, and the discussion will be re with reference to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. And uh, is it the debate that will take place regarding the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, what would conceivably be the nature of that debate? Uh, I, I can't tell you that because I don't know. Uh, does the gentleman in his uh, long experience in the House, uh, could he communicate to those who have, in my case, been in this House uh, uh, 12 years or less, uh, any time in your experience where the House has debated legislation in secret? Uh, my presumption is that we will not debate the legislation in secret. Not only is that my presumption, I think we clearly will have public debate tomorrow uh, on the bill. The uh, uh, minority whip came to me uh, indicating that there were things that he thought the members ought to have knowledge of uh, that he was uh, of the opinion could not be uh, divulged in uh, uh, public debate. Uh, there is a provision under our rules to accomplish that objective. Uh, my friend has said uh, two things. Uh, one is that it's, uh, there's an assumption that it's going to be about FISA, and another one is that uh, there is going to be a debate of sorts. Uh, when I ask the question, if you are aware of uh, whether or not anything like this has happened before, oh, I'm sorry. with respect to, we're talking about specific legislation that is before this House, whether or not anyone, would the gentleman know, when, what is the precedent for this? Is this unprecedented that the House of Representatives would be meeting in secret, preliminary to legislation that it intends to pass. I haven't experienced this in my time, and for information purposes, I would ask the gentleman who's been here, I think, 26, 28 years, if in his experience, he can remember that. I thank the gentleman uh, in responding to him. I believe, and I'm not uh, frankly absolutely positive, and I'm hoping that somebody perhaps on the Intelligence uh, Committee staff 
or others on the House. Well, can I make an observation? I believe that during the early 80s or middle 80s, with reference to the, uh, 1983 uh, on Contragate, there was such a 19 when? 83. On what? Contragate. The, 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 as you know. Iran Contra? Yes. Was that before the hearings or after the hearings? I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, uh, does, if Mr. Blunt well, I mean, there's relevance there. Can, uh, if, if you'll yield to Mr. Blunt, uh, you may be able my, to offer My friend, uh, Mr. Blunt. I my friend, I didn't quite hear your, your last question. Was it before or after? Yeah, I, I asked, it said it was on Iran-Contra, that there was a... It was not on Iran-Contra. It was 1983, and it was on Contra. In fact, our colleague from Florida, uh, Mr. Young, called for that uh, secret session in 1983. There was also a secret session uh, in uh, 1979 and in 1980. Uh, so there have been three of these...